to the wider public who may be watching at a distance, I'm sorry that we have not represented Christ to you. While we were proclaiming a God who loves and values every person, our leader was not living into truth and to the truth of who God is. That was just a small clip from the video apology that Sarah Davis, the CEO of RZIM and the oldest daughter of Ravi Zacharias, just put out on RZIM's uh, Instagram page and also onto their YouTube channel. And why that's significant is because other, other than the written statement that was posted on RZIM's Instagram page in March of 2021, this is the first time, to my knowledge anyway, that Sarah's publicly spoken on this. And she says why right in the beginning of the video. It's been a year since my father's passing and three months since the report from the independent investigation has been made public. And we have committed these months since the report to learning, to private reconciliation, and to restitution. And for this reason, I have not wanted to address publicly what has been happening in recent months or what we've been journeying through as a ministry. But now I would like to do so. So ultimately, she says she's ready to publicly share what's been going on behind the scenes and in their hearts at RZIM. And she said there's much that she wants to say in that video. And that's exactly what she does. And she says a lot. Now, this isn't her entire statement because the video is obviously edited for the sake of time because of some of the comments that I, I want to make along the way. But I've taken what I feel to be the most important parts and I put them together here for you, which is, which is I hope, really helpful, especially if you've been following the whole story and RZIM's journey since the, the allegations came out against Ravi back in August. And I'll put a link to the entire video in the, in the description below so you can go back and watch the whole thing. But for now, I just want you to notice how she speaks and to whom she's speaking. Because first and foremost, even though she's CEO, she's speaking as a daughter. Like always referring to Ravi as my father. And it's in that role that she speaks to five different groups of people that she addresses directly. She addresses the women who are victims, RZIM employees and former employees, RZIM supporters and what they might be feeling in a time like this. She addresses the, the wider public at large. And then finally, she speaks to a group of people that I totally didn't expect her to speak to. And even though it surprised me, it was actually kind of refreshing. And, and I, I hope you feel the same way. Here's what she said. When I became CEO in November of 2019, I couldn't have imagined what would unfold. In March, my father was diagnosed with cancer and in May, he passed away. And while I was just beginning to grieve my father's passing, in August of 2020, we became aware of the allegations of his sexual misconduct and abuse at the spas. These allegations came to us three years after the allegations were brought by the Thompsons in 2017. And I'm grieved that in 2017 and initially in 2020, I made serious errors that only further deep wounds. So what she's referring to right here, if you haven't followed the whole story, is the original allegations by a woman named Lori Ann Thompson back in 2017 that was seriously downplayed and even disbelieved by nearly everyone affiliated with RZIM and anyone close to Ravi Zacharias. This is, it's a huge moment of transparency as she just acknowledges her own failure as well as RZIMs during that whole time period. And it's actually reflective of that video statement that Vincent Joe Vitale put out, uh, also apologizing to the Thompsons for their part in not believing the story. And diving even deeper into her apology, Sarah says this next. My goal and my heart were not to attempt to cover up the sins of my father or any sin to further a call or a mission. I earnestly wanted the truth. I should have immediately called for an independent investigation in 2017, but I trusted my father fully and I carried his narrative both in 2017 and then initially in 2020 when we were first made aware of those allegations. In both of these, I know that I caused pain. I did not serve well and I did not love well. And for this, I'm deeply sorry. But honestly, even during the investigation, while I earnestly prayed for truth, I believe that I already knew it. I believe this man, my father, whom I loved and trusted more than anyone else, could not have done these things. I believed what I had witnessed, a lifetime of integrity beyond reproach, and I believe that I had years of experiences to back this up, but I was wrong. When I was first presented with the evidence that the allegations were true, it quaked my very being. How could this make sense with the man that I knew and what we now know to be true? Was it all a lie? Could he have done these things? And if he did do them, why wouldn't he have confessed them even to his family? For the rest of my life, I will have to hold in tension this man that I knew and love with the man that we know now committed these actions. As the CEO of RZIM and his daughter, I want to help to right the wrongs where possible. And so to the women who are victims of my father's abuse, 
I think of you every single day. I am utterly devastated. I am sorry that I did not see you. I am sorry that you were made powerless and rendered voiceless. When you did speak up, I didn't believe you. And I am deeply sorry for this. I want you to have a voice. Thank you for having the courage to speak up and to bring this into the light. Each one of you was created by God with purpose, with dignity, and intrinsic value. And any way that you have been treated otherwise is a direct violation of God's purpose for you. This is, by definition, abuse. And I am profoundly grieved and deeply sorry for this. I am truly praying for each one of you every single day that God would bring healing, restoring, and justice as only he can. To those of you who worked for RZIM or still do, I am sorry for the errors I made as your leader. I am sorry for the pain, the confusion, and betrayal that you have endured. It grieves me to think that the sins of my father have devastated your lives in this way. I am praying for you and know it was and continues to be a privilege to serve with you all. To our supporters, I'm deeply grateful for you. I know some of you are very angry, hurt, and even feel betrayed by someone that you trusted. I'm profoundly grieved by this and deeply sorry. To the wider public who may be watching at a distance, I'm sorry that we have not represented Christ to you. While we were proclaiming a God who loves and values every person, our leader was not living into truth and to the truth of who God is. And then she reveals something that seems to be really heavy on her heart, calling abusers to repentance and restoration. I was not expecting that, but I'm so glad she did, and I'm so glad she did it publicly. Finally, to those of you who may be watching, who may recognize yourself in my father's sins, maybe you have done similar things. Maybe you have sexually abused someone. Maybe you are only a few decisions away, or perhaps you are not living a life that is true and known. One of the things that compounded the pain of this experience for the victims and also for Ravi's friends and family was that the sin was not confessed, it remained hidden. And often we want to hide our sin, even finding reasons why it may be better for all to do so. But sin, when it is hidden, insidiously grows and it will destroy your life and the lives of those around you. My challenge to you is to bring it into the light and to confess. Confession is always better because it ends the vicious cycle of abuse. I loved my father. And I still do. And I wish he could have known that he could have confessed his sin and I would still love him. Don't hide in the darkness of sin and shame. Ask for help. Bring it into the light. Thank you for letting me say these brief words. And with God's help, may we all walk in truth. So there you have it. Sarah Davis's very public, very transparent apology to a lot of different people. And, and personally, what I saw in this was, was just ownership of her own sin, ownership of her actions that were complicit in all this. And I also saw an example of just Christ-like humility that so many have been wanting to see and to hear from her. This is exactly what a leader should be doing at a time like this. I saw a direct and deep verbal apology to the victims. And then I saw a call and a challenge to anyone like just struggling with, with sexual sin or a history of abuse to, to come and confess it, to drag it into the light and to repent and receive healing and hope in Christ. So what about you? What do you think about this? What are your thoughts on this after watching it? I, I definitely hope it helped you in some way in that hearing Sarah Davis both apologize personally to the victims and even calling abusers to Christ just maybe brought you some closure to all this. So leave a comment and let me know. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, keep seeking Christ first in your life.